The following is a Simpronto Media production. Leaders. Real life leaders. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And I'm so excited to introduce to you Amy Lacey. She's the founder of cauliflower foods and it's all about the cauliflower buzz that's going on she has a best-selling book on cauliflower kitchen and so many amazing things so welcome amy thank you thank you for having me it's such an honor to be here so tell us a little bit about kind of what started all this how did you become the founder of this amazing brand so i'm a mom of three kids and about Mm, Well, it's been about 10 years almost uh, to the day, actually. I was diagnosed with lupus. And how that came about was I was, I had a little business online that I was doing for fun, but primarily my, my whole uh, mission in life was just raising these three kids and being a mom and being a wife. And one day my world was rocked upside down. I ended up getting a pulmonary embolism. My body was just inflamed and attacking itself. I landed in the hospital and for nine months, I was pretty much debilitated. So much so that my two-year-old at the time had to go stay with my in-laws and because I couldn't, I couldn't pick him up. I couldn't take care of him. So I really hit rock bottom. And after having a nine-month pity party, I decided that I needed to change the way I was doing things and get this inflammation out. I was on all kinds of medicine. I felt worse with the side effects of the medicine than I did with the actual disease. So I decided to make food as my medicine. And I really did a lot of research on how to go on an anti-inflammatory diet. And within that process, I wanted to bring some normalcy back to my family. And we, prior to me getting sick, we used to do a family fun night, which was pizza and games. And so I wanted to bring that back to my kids. I wanted to get some normalcy back. So I went looking for a grain-free, gluten-free pizza. And I discovered this cauliflower pizza crust online. There was nothing in the grocery store, but a head of cauliflower. And I started playing around with it and my kids loved it. And we, we brought back family fun night again for our family. And really through food, I was able to heal myself and get off of the medications. And I was a hot mess. I was on blood thinners, which is called cuminin, which don't quote me, but it's like rat poison. I was on Plaquenil, which is the drug that you hear in the news all the time right now for COVID. I was on steroids, which if you've ever experienced steroids or any of your listeners, it makes you crazy because you can't sleep. I was on antidepressants because the whole just becoming debilitated and unable to move and function and do what I was used to doing caused a lot of depression. So they put me on Wellbutrin. So I was a 40-year-old mom of three with all these medications and I, I really just was like, I have to do something. I have to be my own advocate and I have to change this. So I went on to meet with a guy named Rob Wolf. I don't know if you've heard of him. He wrote the paleo mm-hmm. solution. Yeah. And he basically had me do an elimination diet. So I cut everything out and slowly figured out that grains were a real contributor to my inflammation as well as white refined sugar and alcohol. Not that I was a big drinker, but I like to have a glass of wine here and there. So doing that elimination diet and slowly adding things in, like the cauliflower pizza crust, and our cauliflower pizza crust is grain-free and gluten-free, really saved my life. So then I was like, okay, I want to pay this forward. And the next few years were about me getting healing having healing for myself, but also I went on to become a health and life coach and to pay it forward. And I took this, one of my clients talked me into taking the cauliflower pizza crust and zucchini noodles. Neither were in the grocery store to farmer's market. So I thought, well, that'll be fun. We'll do that. We'll go to farmer's market and we'll, we'll start a business. And that's how cauliflower foods started. And in within 24 months, it became an eight figure business online. It just exploded. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that people are constantly trying to switch out their favorite foods for healthier alternatives. But the problem is sometimes some of these quote cauliflower crusts, they've got a laundry list of just a lot of high carb fillers. So they they say there's cauliflower in them, but they have a, this much cauliflower, but then they've got all this other high carb filler ingredients. And it's, you know, I, I looked at one, it was at, I think it was at Trader Joe's because I did a video on this one time. There's one at Trader Joe's. It had more carbs than just the regular whole wheat, but they were calling it a cauliflower pizza. And I was thinking, wow, you know, all of these are not made the same. So people really need to pay attention. Can you talk about that for just a second? Absolutely. And I'll go back to when I first got diagnosed and I was doing the elimination diet. When I went to create a healthier pizza, I went and got a glute. I was told I need to be gluten free. So I went and got a gluten free pizza and I was more inflamed than eating regular pizza. So I really started to do something that I had never done before I got sick, which was really read labels. So you are a step ahead already. You are doing that. Most consumers aren't. Marketing can be, you know, really tricky when we talk about business, the way you market your product, there are not a lot of FDA regulations out there and they need to be stricter about it. But reading labels is key. So you're right. There are a ton of cauliflower products out there now. We were uh, one of two that launched. We were, there was another one out there that called themselves a veggie pizza. We were the first true cauliflower pizza and we literally are cauliflower eggs cheese and spices. And then we have a skew of dairy-free options. That's it. It's really simple ingredients. It's ingredients you can pronounce. Now there are some really successful uh, cauliflower pizza crusts out there and, and other products. It doesn't have to just be cauliflower. There's a lot of um, crazy successful products out there, but if you read the ingredients, they're loaded with fillers. They're not low carb. They have tons of you know, refined other kinds of ingredients in there or ingredients you can't pronounce that are causing our society to be sick. So what I love about our crust and what I love about our products in general, we have 16 products now. We've gone nationwide in grocery. Um, what I love about our products is that you can read all the ingredients, that it is real food, simple ingredients, clean ingredients. It's comfort food made healthy. I grew up with a single mom and I ate a lot of comfort food when I was growing up. And my mom is from the South. So I mean, we're talking like rice cereal, biscuits and gravy, you know, you name it, we ate it and inexpensive food. And, you know, healthy food doesn't have to be expensive, but you've got to read the ingredients. So I, when I came down to it and I looked at my health history, it what it didn't surprise me that I ended up getting sick. Um, at the time, I was very surprised for it because I had been so healthy. But I look at my grandma who had rheumatoid arthritis. I look at my mom who had osteoarthritis. Everybody in our family, every female had some form of inflammation attacking their body. Even my aunt had brain cancer and when the doctor put her on a low carb keto diet for brain cancer. Um, so inflammation in the brain. So it, it doesn't surprise me that I got sick, but I was really surprised when I started looking at ingredients on the back of labels. I mean, it just, I knew what I could eat, but I could not believe how popular some of the products are like Trader Joe's. It's just full of fillers. Or the Oprah pizza. You might as well eat a regular pizza. And Oprah represented Weight Watchers at one point. <laughs> you, can't, right. you can't eat a cauliflower pizza on Weight Watchers. Yeah. Well, I think that, that step one, I think people need to really hear this, that often gluten-free products actually have a higher carb content than its gluten containing equivalent. So like you've got this gluten-free product over here that's loaded with rice flour, tapioca flour, and other similar ingredients, but it's actually a higher carb content than wheat flour does. And so yes, gluten is a protein. And when you remove it out, a lot of people say they feel better, but 
they're not going to feel better if they're just loading up their diet with just more high carb, you know, products and, you know, getting this gluten-free pizza that's got, you know, a ton of corn flour, corn starch, potatoes of starch. I mean, if you really look at what's in there, it's insane. Absolutely. And one of the things that we did early on, and I didn't even realize we were doing it, was we started sharing um, stories of our customers. So we started getting a, a loyal fan base when we were at Farmer's Market and when we launched online. So loyal. We had people that were autoimmune like myself, because I told my story a lot. We had diabetics because we had no added sugar. So diabetics could eat pizza again. We had low carb. We had cancer patients. We had weight loss patients, you name it. We had people just wanting to eat healthier. We had a huge CrossFit community, paleo community, because our, our dairy-free option is paleo, and a huge keto community. So we started sharing our customers' success stories. So, and it wasn't just about losing weight. It was about, or, or healing. It was true stories of people that were changing, having life transformations by changing the way they were eating. And our product got to be part of that uh, testimonial. So I often talk about health, but I also talk about business because I used this whole business technique of called story brand. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but mm-hmm. Dr. is who I learned it from. And it's about telling people stories and making those stories real authentic stories to the brand and basically promoting your brand through those stories. So one of the ways that the business grew and the way that we basically generated a lot of awareness around reading labels is the story of Jesse and Kenzie. And Kenzie was a three-year-old nonverbal autistic girl, Jesse's daughter. Jesse was an overweight, uh, obese mom of four kids. And in order for Kenzie to eat what the doctor had prescribed, which was a low carb diet, Jesse had to sit down with her. So they used our crust in place of bread completely. They, they ate it for breakfast in place of toast. They used it um, for sandwiches. They used it for pizza. They used it for lasagna. They used it for all the different recipes that we provided. They sat down, they ate it at least once, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day. And after seven months, and they did other low carb things. It wasn't just our product, that the whole diet became low carb. And after seven months, I got a call from Jesse and Jesse said, Kenzie is now verbal. And they just released her to be able to go to public school with an aid. So she went from nonverbal to verbal. And Jesse lost 169 pounds because again, Kenzie couldn't eat, wouldn't eat unless Jesse was sitting there eating the same thing with her. So that story alone we shared and that went viral and our business went viral. And it was just about how we help somebody. They went low carb. They did exactly what their doctor said how we provided a service, and then we shared that story and the outcome of that story. And so from a business perspective, I believe stories are really powerful and everybody has a story. And my story has helped me grow our business, but more importantly, I love the stories of our customers. And I love to teach people how you must read labels, how you must, like Jesse had never read labels until Kenzie was put on the low carb diet by her doctor. So you, you just, you can't even believe how much of an impact the ingredients and products make with your health. I know you can believe it and you've had a lot of people on, but the, the person, the everyday person doesn't realize the impact of what our food. And that's why the United States is obese. I mean, other countries do not allow certain ingredients in their country that we allow. So I started learning the impact by hearing all these different testimonials. We had cancer patients um, talking to us and we just kind of opened our doors and said, tell us your story. We want to hear about it. And we want to hear the impact of changing the way you eat, how it's overcome whatever you're going through, how it's made an impact in your life. 
Well, let's talk a little bit about, you know, how someone, maybe someone's listening to this and they're saying, you know, well, I made some recipe or, you know, I, it's funny because I'm actually getting ready to do a 30 day, no sugar detox where it's like no sugar, no grains, even no fruit, you know, which people have different levels. So there's level one, level two, level three, you choose which one you want, but the hardest level is no grains, no sugar, no fruit at all to do like a 30 day complete detox to kind of get it out. So talk a little bit about how you turned your passion into a profit and turn your mess into a message that you could get out to the world to kind of say, listen, I'm going to turn this into a multi, you know, million dollar business. Well, I never, (laughs) I, I, first of all, kudos to you and anybody that is going to join you in in your uh, detox, I should join you in your detox. Yes, you should. Because accountability is the key. You know, I tell people like, you know, you're joining this 30 day group and it's only really for one main reason. Cause people can kind of, they can go on the internet and they can figure out the recipes. They can go on the internet and find exactly what they need to do. You're joining for one reason. You don't need more knowledge you need the accountability and that's what it's going to kind of bring you. But if, if you want to join, it's ChantelRayway.com slash kick sugar. And we'd love to have you on there. And we can just say as a requirement, everyone's going to eat, you know, one <laughs> in order to be part of the group, you're going to eat one cauliflower pizza per day, right? Oh, well, we won't make people do that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> In your group because that white refined sugar and just accountability is right and and being inspired by other people it really helps and so I have to say that I didn't plan to create the business that happened it really happened organically and like I said it it's really started with uh, sharing the different stories of people and then I often say my business was five P's product a really authentic, good product, people. So people was really key. I hired people early on. A lot of them were my friends because my friends were like, hey, we're not seeing you anymore. And I'm like, I know I'm so busy. Come join me. So my friends are very, um, well, I often say, and I, I read this somewhere, they're hungry, humble, and they have strong emotional intelligence. We had no time for drama. And it was all women in my in, on my team, not on purpose, it's just how it happened to be. And so, you know, with a lot of women, sometimes there can be drama, but we had no time for drama. So I surrounded myself with people that were really, like I said, hungry, humble, and had strong emotional intelligence. But I also had advisors that had been there before to advise me. And I think that's really important. And I've since, um, that's what I'm doing for people, new startups is I'm advising them and becoming an advisor to, to people that I wish I would have had more advisors early on. It would have saved me a lot of money of a lot of mistakes I made, but then you also need to have passion. So like you said, I took my mess and I was very passionate about healing myself for my family but I was also really passionate about paying it forward. Once I was healed, I was excited that I was able to get off all my medications. I was excited that I lost weight, that I wasn't depressed anymore. I was excited to pay that forward. It feels really good when you're helping other people. So I I kept that passion really alive. And as we added new products and I did the cookbook, it was all about what works, what am I really passionate about? And how can I pay it forward? And paying it forward was another P of my business. We've always donated. We've always given to charities. We've always supported causes that we really believe in. And I think when you pay it forward, whether you're a coach um, offering maybe some free services online, you're doing free webinars, uh, you're doing a challenge, a summit, whatever you're doing that you're giving information out free, it will come back to you tenfold you will be paid back. Or if you have the monetary or the time and the resources to donate to charities, I always believe in that. We always did that early on. And then finally, a tough one is perseverance because there's a lot of highs in business and Mm -hmm. a lot of lows, but to be able to persevere through it, like what gets you through the day when it's just the bottoms falling out? 
I remember I made a terrible mistake on the packaging. The macros were off on our packaging. We had had this new packaging. I'm the final check off on it. The macros were off and our community pointed it out to us. Well, I, I had already spent $250,000 on packaging. We were selling a pizza crust every three seconds. We had to keep up on packaging. And so I basically <clears throat> got in a fetal position and cried because I, I knew I was going to be losing a lot of money and we couldn't send that packaging out. But I also just admitted, <clears throat> excuse me, I admitted what happened. I wrote a letter to my community. We had a couple hundred thousand people on email that were um, opening our emails regularly. Just wrote an email, just said, was really transparent. I made a mistake. The ball drops with me. I'm the final say on the packaging. We are going to fix it. And we're so grateful that you pointed it out to us. And we did, we were able to fix it. It cost us a lot of money, but we were transparent that we made a mistake and we moved forward. And so I think those five P's in my business, having a really good product, surrounding yourself with great people, keeping the passion alive, paying it forward and having perseverance are key to my business moving forward and being able to be the business that is today, which is um, it's growing rapidly. And even through these times that we're experiencing, we're still growing. We're still seeing a lot of growth, which is great. So talk to us about maybe a couple mistakes. I love that one that you just shared with us because that was a really good one. And I think that people really do learn from other people when they are really able to just kind of be transparent like you just were and say, you know, here's some some mistakes I've made along the way with my leadership and here's what I've learned to help other people kind of not have to go through that. So what would be a couple of them for you that you'd say, here's something that I did that if I could go back, I would have changed. Changed, I would have done this differently. Yeah, I think often when your businesses are growing, <clears throat> you start focusing on the dollar, right? And you start focusing less on people, but more on what do I need to do next to keep this this momentum going? Like we're we're doing well, we're bringing we're selling a lot of product, and you start looking at the dollars and you start looking at your spreadsheets instead of the people because people will buy from people, right? So. I kind of took my eye off of that in 2018. We were selling a pizza crust every three seconds. I started getting focused on what's the next strategy to keep the momentum going. Instead of really taking a step back, enjoying what was happening and listening to our community. And we had always done that. We had sent out surveys. We had listened to what they wanted. They said they wanted a dairy-free option. We gave them a dairy-free option. But I got, I was launching the cookbook. It became an instant national bestseller. I had new products I was launching and I got caught up in the momentum of the success that we had created. And then I stopped focusing on the consumer. And I think that was a huge mistake that I quickly learned very quickly because we started doing things. We never cut ingredients. We never cut costs, but we started doing less engagement less um, listening to our consumers. And it really, it really hurt our business. And so I would say if you have a business out there, whether it's a product based or a coaching business, think about who your ideal client is or who your ideal person is that you serve and make sure you never take your eye off of them. Like you are always wanting to over-serve, over-deliver. Keep that going and your business will success, be successful. The money will come in. Don't make your business about the bottom dollar of the bottom line. You know, early on, I could have been, um, somebody approached me at the Las Vegas food show, Pizza Expo, actually. It wasn't a food show. It was Pizza, Pizza Expo. And it was a, a very big co-packer in Southern California that co some of my competitors. And he said, I can drop your costs to one third and you will make you know, two thirds more money, you will be huge. Let's do it. And I, I met with him privately. We looked at all the ingredients. He would not use fresh cauliflower, only powdered. Well, when you use powder, you have to have fillers in it. And I said, okay, well, let's see what we can do with this powdered, or can we use pureed? And every time we went to look at it, the ingredients, the fillers were things I couldn't eat. So I had to really think early on, do I promote a product I know I can make a ton of money on, but I, I personally can't eat it? Or do I stay authentic and just hope for the best? And early on, I took that road of 
being authentic, continuing with a product that I personally can eat, but I know would be healthy for others. And so that's how my business was built. So in 2018, when we were just flying and things were just booming, I took my eye off that and I, I really looked more at the spreadsheets and the revenue coming in and the margins rather than what the people wanted. And so I think that cost me about a million dollars, to be honest with you. I think having that couple months where I took my eye off of what was really important, and I don't think I did it deliberately. I think what happened was the book was a huge success and the new products that we launched were a huge success. And rather than being the Amy I originally was, which was handwriting personal letters to my customers, reaching out to my customers, listening to my customers, I just got really busy and went on this spree of promoting the book and promoting new products and going on the doctor's show and Dr. Oz. And it was almost like my head got too big and I needed to come back down to reality. And so that's what I did. It, it took me a moment. Uh, our business started slipping a little bit and I realized, wait a minute, I've got to get back to listening to who's most important, which is our consumer and our customer. So my advice is to definitely over deliver. And sometimes you've got to give away your knowledge to build that community, give away your freebie, give away your products to influencers, see if they like it, um, have them post about it. Sometimes you've got to give a little and really listen and over deliver to move to the next level, but you will move to the next level. I love that. Remain humble. Don't get, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> So yeah, I was really good. I, I, I need to go back and look because I actually decided to make a video to show people because at the time this was probably like, I don't know, three years ago or so. And I was like, I'm going to make my own cauliflower crust. And it was a nightmare. I'm telling you, I took fresh cauliflower. I'm sitting there grating this thing. Then I'm sitting there squeezing like in a nut bag to, you know, once I cook it to get all the water out of it. You almost need this video to show people, look, if you really want to make this great cauliflower pizza from fresh cauliflower and not do that. I think that would be a huge marketing campaign for you really to kind of show, look, this is the average Joe making this right in, not just, you know, with this powder, here's, here's why we're different. Here's our competitors using this powder nonsense. That's got all these crazy fillers. And here's Miss average person trying to actually do this. It is a nightmare. My hands, because I you ha in order to get the cauliflower to where you want it, I literally had to take a break. I told the video guys, I said, take a break. My hands hurt. Now he's sitting there and watching me like just sitting there like taking a break. And then I'm like getting other people. I'm like, can somebody else squeeze this water out of this cauliflower? It is no joke that you've got to have machinery for that because trying to make that at home is not a good use of time for anybody. <laughs> that you brought that up because early on when I was making, when I was sick and I was trying to bring the normal seat back the first like five or six times I made it, it was a total flop. And I'm like, okay, I'm determined to make this right. And I got to tell you, I didn't even like cauliflower. I'm like, it's not green. So I didn't think it was a vegetable and it smelled. And so I'm like, oh, I don't even usually eat cauliflower, but I'm determined to make this. It looked beautiful in the video that I was watching the online video. I'm like, I'm determined to make this right. So after several times, and I used a nut bag, we finally got it to work. But then after playing with it, my daughter and I, and my daughter was 12 at the time, I believe. Um, no, she must've been a little bit younger. It doesn't matter. She was young. She's like, mom, why don't you try this particular machine? And so we tried it. It worked. And now we use huge versions of those machines in our manufacturing plant. But one of the things I love, and you know what, I'm going to take your advice on that. I mean, I am going to do a video of making it from scratch because I do have the exact recipe that we sell online in my book. And the purpose of that was to show people, hey, you can make it at home, but it is a straight up mess. It is difficult to make it consistent every time. And so, I'm going to have to look for that video. I have to see if I can find it and I'm going to email it to you. You're going to get a kick out of it. 
You, you'll love it. You can, you can use it. You have my, my rights or whatever to, to use it however you want. So let's give us t- anything that I haven't asked you yet. Once on the side of health. So like two tips that you'd say, here's kind of some tips that are kind of more advanced that really took your health to the next level. And then give us two final tips on leadership that you feel like, you know, this kind of really took my leadership. Once I started doing this, it took my leadership from here to here. Well, it's interesting because what I would say for both is the same thing. Mm. So two things that I did early on that made huge impacts in my health, as well as my business. One, and it sounds so simplistic, but I'm telling you actually three things. I'm telling you they, that it really works. So one is I never, I had like, I was on my kid's schedule. Those were my habits. I never really poured into myself. I never really thought that habits were super important for my health as well as my business. So I, I'm a reader. Uh, I truly believe if you don't like to read, listen to podcasts then, because I think it's so important to learn from other people that have been there, done that. So that's one of the things I did for both personal and business. Personal, I started with Rob Wolf and changing the way I did the elimination diet. Then I worked with Thomas DeLauer on intermittent fasting. Um, We've had Thomas also as an influencer. So he's affected my business as well. So surround yourself with people that have experience in what you need. If you don't read, because readers are leaders, listen to podcasts. I'm a huge podcast fan. Um, So that was something that I adopted early on in my personal life for my health, as well as my business. I listen to podcasts on health, on podcasts on creating good habits. And I started creating my own habits, even though I was still surrounded by my kids' timeline, like, hey, got to get up at this time, make them breakfast. I changed a lot of things for them as well as myself. For example, excuse me, I grew up on cereal, right? Cold cereal, cold cereal, depending on the cereal, of course. And I ate like terrible cereal, like Cocoa Puffs and things like that. I would never feed those to my kids. You might as well give them a candy bar. It's better for them. But I wanted to get my kids in a good habit, which is one, starting with a hot, healthy breakfast. So I did that for my kids. Now for me, it didn't work. I I didn't need that. I did the intermittent fasting. That was the best for my inflammation. But it was about developing habits and making sure that I stuck to those habits. And I added a new habit every month. Um, Jesse Itzler, who's Sarah Blakely's husband, Sarah is the founder of Spanx. She is one of those people that I look up to, that I listen to, that I watch and I follow. He has a program where he develops 12 habits in a year. You, you adopt a new habit every month. And I did that particular program and I made those habits stick. And the only way you can have those habits stick is by repeating them over and over and over. So that's how I did my personal life and my health, really sticking with the parameters of what I knew would be anti-inflammatory, making sure I got enough sleep, making sure I de-stressed. I added meditation. I had never meditated. I never had personal habits. So I added meditation. I added a spiritual component to that, very strong faith-based. So I added that into my life. That was really important to me. Reading. All of those have helped my business as well. So habits in my business, very strict habits of getting all of that out of the way, making sure that I did that before I checked my emails and so forth. Just having that morning routine was very important in my business as well. Um, And then adopting those same habits and putting them, showing them to my kids as well as my employees. So, you know, when you wake up, don't check your email first thing. Don't start getting onto social media first thing. So those were habits that I instilled in my family as well as my business. And then the fear factor. Fear seems to break people's habits. It seems to stop them cold. They don't believe that they can do it. It's a mindset thing. So I definitely have a lot of fear. I always have. And the 
the one way, I mean, I think about my very first podcast I was ever on. It was Farnoosh's So Money. And I had notes everywhere. I was freaking out about being on the podcast and I was super scared. And now I've been on a lot of podcasts and I still do the same amount of research I did for Farnoosh's, but I don't let myself get all riled up. Same with being on stage or being on the doctor's show. The thing is, or going to a food show and approaching Albertsons or a Kroger store and saying, this is why you need this product. It's, it's scary. The thing that overcomes fear is doing it again and again and again. So that first podcast that you're on might be really scary, but by the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, tenth, it, the fear goes away. The same with anything, the same with business. You've got to have the mindset that you think you can do it and do it, lay out a well plan, create the habits you need to execute that plan, and then do not let fear paralyze you. Because if I can do it, anybody can do it. If I can create the business I created and the life I have now, I know anybody can. I mean, I was homeless at one time. I lived in a foster care at one time. I have a degree from Chico State. I was the first person to graduate. I don't have, you know, an MBA from some business school. I just really applied those five P principles, created some great habits, and did not let fear paralyze me. And look, I got a lot of no's. And every time somebody would say no to me in my head, I said, no means next opportunity. So how can I rearrange this to get back in front of that buyer because I know that Albertsons needs my product. I know Whole Foods should have my product. I know that because I know what it's done for me personally. So no matter what your business is or what you're trying to accomplish in life, I really believe those are the key components. Mindset, habits, don't let fear paralyze you. Surround yourself with audio, books, people, masterminds, whatever you can that can pour into yourself so that you can also grow. So those are, that's actually four things. I <laughs> love it. You're overachieving and giving us an extra one. Well, this has been so amazing. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Okay. So our products, Cauliflower Foods, we have many SKUs. We just launched entrees. So we have enchiladas and lasagnas, low carb, the only ones out there, nationwide stores. So if you go to our website, cauliflowerfoods.com, you can put in your zip code and it'll tell you where the stores are, or you can order it online. Um, The Cauliflower Kitchen Cookbook, which is I love this book (laughs) so much. It's got amazing recipes, not just pizza. You can get this wherever books are sold. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. And then I just started doing some mentor programs. I'm doing a lot of freebies. I want to help people get the mindset that they can do what I did. And so if you go to my website, heyamylacy.com, you can book a consultation with me and you can see some of the things that I have on there um, to help propel your business and your life. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. And remember, if you have a question, go to questions at chantelrayway.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Life Leadership. If you'd like to get the show notes or access more resources, log on to reallifeleaders.com slash podcast to get the show notes from this episode and any other resources we might have mentioned. And also, we'd love to hear from you. Be sure to review or rate this podcast on Apple Podcasts to help spread the word. And if you have any leadership questions you want answered, email podcast at reallifeleaders.com. 